Electronics is an exciting world. People nowadays tend to forget the basics. Simple electronic circuits with basic components that work in an almost magical way. In fact, it's not that magically complex at all. I will show you with clear and to the point explanations of how it works. Let's take a look at today's circuit. This circuit is a timer circuit. Often you'll want at the trigger of a certain event something to switch on for a specific amount of time. In this example circuit we'll switch an LED on for a certain duration. First we'll take a look at this most basic version, based on a single transistor. As you can see, it works, but the LED doesn't turn off clean. First let's see how this circuit operates. It consists of a transistor, a few resistors, a capacitor and a switch. As for the output, we are using an LED with a series resistor. The capacitor and the parallel resistor form the timing part of the circuit. If we close the switch, current will start flowing to the capacitor, charging it almost instantly. At the same time, the current will flow through the 100 kilo ohm resistor to the transistor's base. This closes the transistor, turning on the LED. When we open the switch again, the current flow to the capacitor stops, but the capacitor is still charged, keeping the transistor powered on. Right after opening, the voltage will be at the supply voltage, but the parallel resistor will start discharging the capacitor. This causes the voltage to drop, until, at some point, it reaches 0.7 volts. The transistor will open and the LED will turn off. The voltage at the capacitor drops further until it is completely discharged. Because the transistor doesn't operate as an ideal switch, it will have a crossover period where the transistor isn't fully closed anymore, but also not fully open yet. This happens around a 0.7 volt point. This leads to the LED fading out instead of switching off clean. We can modify the circuit to make it better. We take the original circuit and add another transistor. In the original part, we remove the LED and change the resistor to a higher value. Now imagine the transistor as a switch. We assume it's open now. That means the supply voltage reaches the second transistor. This causes that transistor to close. The voltage at the output is now 0 volts. When we trigger the circuit, the first transistor will close. This pulls this point to 0 volts, causing the second transistor to open. The output is now at 12 volts, or the supply voltage. This seems not right, because the output is now the opposite of what we want. We say the output is inverted. But, what we did achieve is removing the crossover period. The second transistor will amplify the slightest faulted difference causing it to switch clean to the open or closed state. To solve the problem of inverted output, we simply can add the same circuit again. This time we put the LED in the output. When we close the switch now, the first transistor will turn on and the capacitor charges instantly. We can open the switch and the capacitor starts discharging. At this point, the voltage at the first transistor is 0 volts. The second transistor inverts that, so there will be the supply voltage at that point. The last step of the circuit inverts that again to 0 volts at the output. Therefore, the LED has a supply voltage over it, so it will light up. When the capacitor is discharged after the specific time, the LED will turn off again. Now, we could make this circuit a bit simpler in theory, by removing the last step. If we connect the LED this way, it will turn on when the transistor is off. This works, but there is a reason why I prefer the 3 transistor one. In this circuit, we have the advantage that we can connect anything between the two contacts, without current limitations. That means you can power anything, like by using a relay as long as the last transistor can handle the current. 
This circuit can be used in many ways, for different purposes. The specific time is determined by the combination of the capacitor and resistor. The voltage of a discharging capacitor looks like this. It all depends on when the voltage reaches below the 0.7 volts. With a larger capacitor or larger resistor, it takes longer. A smaller capacitor or smaller resistor will result in a shorter time. I hope this explanation has been clear to you and I hope you get inspired by the logical way these simple circuits used to be made. Nowadays people use microcontrollers for practically anything, losing touch with actual electronics and the magic that goes with it. If you want to see more of this, don't forget to subscribe and questions and comments are always welcome below. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, check out my latest project SnackCube, a fully functional snack delivery robot built without microcontrollers or software programming. And as always, thank you for watching and see you next time.